Happy Easter, everyone. We've got a multi-day severe weather outbreak over the next three days. So we got a lot to cover in this update. So let's get right to it. Take a look at the satellite picture this morning. Our main concern for today is going to be right along this stalled warm front. That's going to be the setup for showers and severe storms across this region, especially as we head into five o'clock into the evening time frame. There's the southwest winds pulling in that mo moisture surge, but there's the more significant, our main player still hanging off the west coast that is the system that's bringing the heavier rains into california and eventually to skirt across the desert southwest and eventually set the stage for the much bigger severe weather storm setup for monday into tuesday but for today our main concern is up here across uh, the upper midwest especially as we get towards kansas city swinging into springfield all the way up into indianapolis those will actually swing into cincinnati getting into portions of uh, Charleston, as well as even further further into the east, into Roanoke. We saw some tornado warnings yesterday across Ohio that a piece of it entered, did, did enter actually West Virginia. We could be seeing some more tornadic activity today. So don't let your guard down. This is a 2% risk for some isolated spin up tornadoes because we could definitely see one down here towards the Quincy region, down into Springfield, all the way into Champaign. Does include the Bloomington region as well as into Mount Vernon, but also the heavier rains as well. I think things get going into Illinois around five o'clock today but then really start to activate and push eastbound into Indianapolis, as well as into Dayton, all the, those areas into Columbus and Ohio, and then eventually headed off into the Pittsburgh region. So we're gonna be diving deeper into the forecast, but first, a word from my sponsor. Don't we wanna know where our roots are? That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's video sponsor, My Heritage. So if you open up the kit, it's actually got these little, Cheek swabs. Yeah, so there's two of them. All right, so I'm simply gonna swab 30 seconds on my left cheek. And I'm gonna do the other swab. So then I'm gonna open up one of these vials and I'm simply gonna place the bottom half of it inside the cylinder. So I've got my sample ready to mail off to the lab. I'll wait a couple of weeks, so I'm gonna be super excited and I'll start revealing the results once they come in. So while I'm waiting on my results to come back in the mail, I'm on the My Heritage site, and they've got this, they've got this cool little animation photo tool. So here it is right here. You can actually take any photo. This is a picture of my parents way back in the day. And, um, and here it is animated. It's actually a really cool feature to kind of play around with. And it's really cool to kind of share some of your photos with some of your, your friends and family. All right, drum roll, please. What? 47% Irish? You know what's ironic about that is my wife and I actually got married on St. Patrick's Day. So I guess I really do have the luck of the Irish. So Eastern Europe, this is very interesting. Okay, so so far I've got 47% Irish, 24% Eastern Europe. And, oh, and 17% English. And Scandinavian. Huh. I, I had no idea. This is actually really cool. <laughs> oh, and West Asian. Wow, so I've got a lot of countries covered. So yeah, it was an awesome experience. You can actually experience this for yourself by clicking the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen right now to start your free 30-day trial and use the code PAL for free shipping. So let's time this thing out for you. I think things get going around five o'clock. Here's the radar depiction about one o'clock in the morning. So We've got this, uh, we've got the main player, right? The main player is still gonna be off the West Coast. We do have a strong, pretty significant cold front that will be moving across. And it's gonna be leaving some snow in its wake in portions of New, uh, New Mexico here, as well as in Arizona, and also another band up here portions of South Dakota. But the main system is gonna be out here towards Illinois. I think things get firing up around five o'clock this afternoon and they will continue to push eastbound. So as we get into the evening time frame, heading towards that midnight hour, this is what the radar could look like uh, with the heavier rains involved in this region. And some of those areas could see some larger hailstones with it. And that isolated spin up tornado further south is definitely uh, not out of the question. But as we move through 
tomorrow. So this is gonna be your main system. This is the juice box, if you will. Here's where the low pressure center will likely be around five o'clock tomorrow afternoon. You've got the Southwest winds and the elevated dew points all the way lifting into that warm front area back into uh, the upper Midwest. This whole zone is gonna be in the favored area for that severe storms out ahead of the cold front. So once the cold front moves through, things are gonna be really nice. But before that, we've got concerns for all three modes of severe storms. And the latest update from the Storm Prediction Center does in fact have that enhanced risk really highlighted across Oklahoma, through northwestern portions of Arkansas, as well as into Missouri, and further south into southern Illinois, but could extend this actually into portions of North Texas with their updates as we get closer. And then further south, it actually extends with a kind of a squall line into the evening time frame all the way down to the San Antonio region. So we got a pretty big significant event. This is where the low pressure center will be. Storms activate along the dry line and push eastbound. And this low pressure center continues to lift up northeast. So the southeast quadrant of that, that's where the main instability and the shearing and the change in directions of heights where we got to be concerned about large hail as well. So we got pretty significant updrafts. Right now we do have in fact that hatched risk for that very large hail that would include some of those two inch two inch or greater hailstones within the region of Springfield. That does include the Tulsa region down here into Oklahoma City and far north portions of North Texas. But looking at the latest data, they actually could be extending this a little bit further south as well. So we could be looking at some big time hell producers with this particular setup, but unfortunately also tornadoes. And this leads to a nocturnal threat. So the main area right now, we, we do have that 10% hatched risk that would imply a more significant tornado, possibly an EF2 or greater within this zone of the Springfield region, uh, further south into St. Louis, all the way into Paducah. That is the most favored area right now to seeing a strong tornado coming out of this deal. But further south, don't let your guard down too, back into Tulsa, as well as into Oklahoma City, into Little Rock, as well as into Memphis, Memphis, Tennessee. And even further south down there in the Texas with the little mini squall line that will be developing. Once the cap breaks, things will start to uh, uh, develop after five o'clock, I think. And we'll have a squall line to deal with uh, all the way down to the Waco, Austin, as well as under the San Antonio region. So this is gonna be a big swath, big time event. I actually will be live for this setup starting about five o'clock tomorrow. So here's the setup around five o'clock. So we've got the low pressure center gonna be highlighted across the Texas Panhandle. At ahead of it, we should start to see supercell thunderstorms. So we still have a cap capping inversion for much of the day where that warm air aloft puts a suppress on the activity. But once that cold front, once the upper level, low level jet kicks in, that will start to erode that the capping inversion and that's where i think supercell thunderstorms are going to start to elongate across this boundary into uh the kansas region southeastern portions of kansas getting into the oklahoma region and then eventually swinging into the wichita falls region and that's the system i think will back build back into texas and eventually swing all the way into the san antonio region while we are concerned about more tornadic activity going into the overnight hours they are highlighted into missouri eventually headed into the St. Louis region. So Springfield and St. Louis. And then eventually this will have that warm front again, raked with more heavy rain and some severe storms along this region. Heading into that 10 o'clock time frame, you can see what we're talking about. The low pressure center really starts to dominate and gets active here. We're very intense low pressure center for that april 1st time frame some cold air behind this and yeah that blue that's heavier snow falling folks but out ahead of it that's where the back building setup will take shape down there in texas and it swings all the way down really into the coast <laughs> almost into new mexico there with the squall line that could have some bigger time hell producers maybe an isolated spin up tornado or two is definitely not out of the question some heavier winds with this broken squall line 
further north a lot more instability under that enhanced risk into oklahoma getting into southeastern oklahoma right there in southeastern portions of kansas but then it goes into arkansas especially into missouri as we head into that 10 o'clock time frame this is where we could see some of those strong tornadoes unfolding across this region that would extend into the portions of illinois and eventually swing all the way with that warm front getting into uh, indianapolis back into ohio again and that eventually swings into west virginia even into virginia regions and then day day two would look like this this is where you're going into the afternoon hours as we head into tuesday where the low pressure center will likely be right up here into those areas into northern illinois and there's the juice box if you will all the soupy air mass that's yet to be untapped just waiting for this cold front and that's where the instability the higher dew points are going to be surging further north that puts all this area into play for some of those supercell thunderstorms as we head deeper into tuesday and in fact there it is folks that's the storm prediction center enhanced risk would be highlighted over the Kentucky region by then, back into Louisville, getting into Cincinnati region. Those could actually even extend into Pittsburgh, even into Baltimore, Washington, D.C., getting down there into Charleston, even further south. So further south you go, back into Nashville, all the way into Memphis, and in fact, further south, deeper into uh, Alabama, back into Mississippi, that's when you have a little bit less severe threat as those should be just on the marginal side. But the main bullseye, especially is gonna be into Kentucky heading into Tuesday. But pretty concerning folks on the elicity track with these where these updrafts could produce some of those bigger time hell producers, some of those uh, isolated tornado threat a lot of color showing up on the map with ahead of this dry line even further south into texas right around the red river area getting into oklahoma there but then it really highlights across missouri that's where we have the most significant threat for tornadoes that gets into the illinois back into kentucky region and that will be swinging across into the overnight hours so you could be looking at a more of a four o'clock in the morning event for for kentucky and then you'll have a secondary batch that will come in into tuesday afternoon for them that will eventually head into west virginia and eventually head into uh, virginia as well so an active two days for sure and by the time we head into tuesday afternoon this is where the low pressure center will likely be fishtailing all those heavier rains and so that squall line and the supercell thunderstorms will continue to push off to the east but look what happens folks this is goes into wednesday i think we lose a lot of the luster on the severe storms luckily but yes that is another swath of heavy rain will be highlighted across the eastern seaboard they've just been crushed with system after system that you just can't seem to buy a break so you got more rain heading into florida all the way up into the east coast into south carolina north carolina there is a pretty significant low pressure center that will continue to lift up to the northeast and start to wrap around and slow down up there into the upper great lakes look at the cold air we do have a strong cold front look at the clearing back behind that front we're going to be setting up some really nice days once this system moves through so once that cold front moves through your area it's going to be actually really nice but if you're still in the warm sector it's going to be pretty nasty until that actually moves through but it's going to feel like winter hi right, folks these are wind chills heading into wednesday morning april the third and all that blue those are freezing wind chills folks so you're going to have to bust out the jacket dust it off especially further south you live because it's going to feel a little bit more like winter <laughs> back behind that front at least for you know at least for a day with this cooler cooler winds coming in from the northwest that will continue to shift off into illinois and back eventually headed up into the northeast that's the system where it could start to stall out and yeah look at the blue folks that is all snow and this could be a fairly significant snowstorm for april standards up there into the, into the northeast some pretty healthy totals could really start to pile up up there in upstate new york and back into even into portions of massachusetts especially into vermont and new hampshire and yes maine again would likely get some definitely some heavier snows but even on the blend guidances right now been been, been pretty persistent with this system on a lot of the ensemble guidance 
the latest update from the blend would have that more significant low pressure center dumping some foot totals is definitely not out of the question in upstate new york even into portions of massachusetts but especially into vermont and new hampshire back into maine i think they just get crushed with this system and definitely can't roll out with that low pressure center kind of slowing down and deepening once it gets further north up into the great lakes yeah that's going to be printing out some couple inch totals further north you live into michigan could pick up some six to eight inch totals is likely not out of the question so yeah the million dollar question heading into next week is what's going to happen we're you know what's the weather going to be like for this eclipse and we've been kind of talking about this we'll actually do a special video on this as we get a little bit closer but the preliminary look is you know once this system moves out on thursday right back behind it we've got some pretty warm conditions actually really nice conditions but what we're going to be seeing is is this ridge actually will be building up into the northeast well they've just been pummeled with heavier rains as of late and all the unsettled they've actually got some drying conditions start to unfold across that region well be we we watching another system coming in off the west coast and by sunday it could start to elongate into the central u.s region by then and that could be a little bit unfortunate because it does appear we're going to go into a more of an unsettled period as we head into that seventh time frame, which would include that Sunday and then likely going into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from from about the seventh through the 11th time frame. We look to have some definitely some unsettled weather and some above average precipitation across the central southern plains, central plains and across the northern tier, while much of the east coast starts to dry out. So right now, it does appear where that, uh, you know, totality zone would likely unfold. The further north you live heading into the northeast, and especially there into Maine, you could actually see having the best viewing for your solar eclipse as we head into monday afternoon for your april the 8th we'll be fine tuning this but as of right now it looks extremely unsettled further south with that new system coming in on sunday and we've got that stalled front we could be looking at more showers and severe storms across that region and that looks to continue for several days to come even after the eclipse so i appreciate you guys uh, watching and do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update. Wire protect you before and after the storm.